Professor Van Beck, could you please uh, give us some more details about the project which was already introduced, Project Mind? Well, thank you for the uh, uh, invitation. Thank you, uh, Professor Harlem, for talking so slowly for such a long uh, time. And uh, never the first time, I think, in her whole life. I once visited her in uh, Ireland, and people did not understand her there either because she was talking so fast. So we're all very lucky uh, that we uh, spent 15 minutes with Professor Harlem talking so slowly. It's also the first time, actually, that my presentation is. Uh, from, I'm Dutch, so it's, I'm speaking English, but it's translated back to Dutch or Flemish, so that's a good experience. If there are any questions and anything unclear, please uh, raise your hand. You can also, uh, your, uh, please ask also questions or stop me in between my presentation. I'm used to it. In Holland, everyone is very direct, and so are patients. Last year, I was at a patient organization talk and I explained about the disease and after three minutes one patient raised his hand and said, uh, Professor, this you've told last year the same, so please don't do it again, so uh, um, I'm used to a lot. Um, I'm going to talk about an, uh, ex yeah, I think it's an exciting project. I think it has, it's good to be after the first presentation because uh, one of the goals of this uh, project is actually to see uh, whether ALS is one disease or multiple diseases, and uh, Professor Arnold just explained that uh, to you, that that's very important if you want to identify a treatment. I think, just to add, is that I think the starting point where we are now, there are still many problems that need to be solved, but the starting point now for identifying better treatment is a lot better than, than I think than five years ago. We learned a lot, but we also improved a, a lot, and our knowledge about the disease is a lot better. It still could take 50 years to find a treatment, but it could also be tomorrow. And I think compared to five years ago, the chance that the disease will, that the treatment will be developed sooner is a lot higher than, than five years ago. Why we why do we want to do a large-scale worldwide study in genetics? It's because we want to identify subgroups of patients for stratification, for better trials, for biomarkers, for identifying disease model, animal models for the disease. Because that's the starting point, what we have learned over the last five years, that genetics is the starting point for all those research projects. This short introduction about genetics in ALS is that uh, well, genetics is in the DNA, you probably all know that from school, but there are two forms of ALS, as you probably all know, familial forms, so that's uh, uh, ALS that runs in a family, and uh, there's, there are the sporadic forms. And what we think, what we know, is that in the familial forms, there's one big, um, well, something missing or something wrong in a large part of the DNA, a mutation in DNA that will cause the disease. So it's so large that the, um, that the DNA cannot produce the right protein and that will lead to the disease. In sporadic, um, ALS, a non-familial disease. It's a little bit different because there we think there are many uh, variations in the genome, in the DNA, that also determine, uh, well, similar uh, variations in the DNA also determine why you have blonde hair or black hair, whether you are a fast runner or a slow runner, um, or also why some uh, families are more susceptible for certain diseases. So some families, are there, there's a, a particular genetic makeup that makes them more susceptible for cardiovascular disease or for cancer. And it could also be that there's also a set of variations in the genome that uh, if they are there together, uh, could lead to a higher susceptibility for developing ALS. 
And that may not be enough. It may be that, um, uh, that you also need risk factors, some factors in the environment or lifestyle, such as a profession, exposure to chemicals, or uh, uh, sports, or, um, or uh, something in the diet, that together with the genetic makeup eventually leads to the disease. So in both forms, the familial form and the sporadic form, genes, genetic variation, large mutations, but also smaller variants in the genome play an important role in developing the disease. And it's important to uh, identify those factors in the genome because each gene has a specific function in, in, the, in your body. So a, a gene... Uh, could be important for uh, all those disease mechanisms that Professor Hardman just mentioned. Uh, they, if, if something wrong is, is if something is wrong in a gene, there may be something wrong in each disease mechanism, so like inflammation, oxidative stress, etc., etc. So if we know the gene that plays a role in ALS, we also know the mechanism of the disease that could be wrong in the disease, and we also know where we have to look for treatment. So what is the aim of a project I want to do, Project Mine? Um, it's, it's called Project Mine because it's my genome in me, data mining. What we want to do, what's the aim of the project, is to elucidate the genetic basis of ALS, so it's a human genome project for ALS. You want to identify all genetic variants that play a role in, in ALS. So we want to establish a large database of all those genetic variants, and also from various backgrounds, from several, from various countries, because they could be different, could, those genetic variants could be different in specific countries. So, for example, in familiar ALS, uh, in the UK and the US, 20% uh, of familiar cases have the SOD1 mutations, mutation, while we do not find any of those mutations in Ireland, uh, Holland, or Switzerland. So it's important to do that in an international uh, fashion. <coughs> Here is, well, this I could go over very short. Um, this is what I already told. So it's, uh, it's all the different um, uh, variation in the genome that could play a role in a disease. Um, it's, it looks very difficult, so I try to explain. It's, just, it's actually the only difficult slide in the whole uh, presentation. But uh, if it's easy, then you think it's easy. But I have, to, uh, I, mean, I have to impress you that we're doing a very important, difficult project. But um, just to show this slide, is, is, so here is the frequency of the, in the normal population of a specific genetic variant or uh, mutation. So if it's a rare mutation, it, 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 so okay, and on the y-axis is the risk of developing the disease. So some variants have a high risk, so if you have that genetic variant, variant the genetic mutation, it's 100% sure you develop the disease. But there are also variations that have a very low risk. So if you have a very genetic mutation, it's 100% sure you develop the disease. But there are also variations that have a very low risk. So if you have that variation, the risk of developing ALS is going up with a few percent. Okay? And so what we know is that there are very rare mutations, that those are the mutations that occur in families. Otherwise, everyone would have ALS. So those are the variants that are very high risk. So you have a mutation, you have something in your DNA that will 100% sure lead to the disease. But there are also variants that are common, but that have a very low risk. Okay? And what we, what's a very, we know some of these variants, we know some of these, we don't know any of this variation in the genome that could be very important in leading to disease. And those are the intermediate variants with low frequency. So the rare variants with low frequency. That's a very hot topic now in genetics. 
So if you go to a party tonight, you want to say something that sounds very important, just say, oh, I think it's very important to study rare variants with intermediate risk. Okay? So in this is what we want to identify in Project Mine. All genetic variants, the rare variants, the common variants, but also the, the rare bear variants with intermediate risk. All genetic variation that could lead to ALS. And to do that, we need uh, to, to use a new uh, technology, it's whole genome sequencing, so we can determine the order of the base pairs, or millions of base pairs, in, in one patient, and cost about twenty, uh, cost about two thousand uh, dollars. So that's still expensive, but it used to take years to do that, and it used to be much more expensive. So it comes now to the level that we can apply this new technology to a larger number of cells. And what we want to do is to do what we need to do to identify all the genetic variants that are important in ALS. We need to whole genome sequence 15,000 ALS patients and 7,500 controls. So that's, that's a lot. And, but it's important to, to have those numbers to have really significant results. And the controls we can use also for studying uh, genetics in other diseases like Parkinson's disease, cancer, infectious diseases. So those, the data coming from the controls can be used in other research projects as well. The project was started by three uh, patients in the Netherlands. So it's a patient-driven uh, research uh, project. And uh, we thought it was almost impossible to, to whole genome sequence uh, 22,500 uh, patients and controls. But they said, well, nothing is impossible, we should just do it. And they started the, uh, the project, and we started to believe in it as well. Because they started many, uh, together with the uh, ALS Foundation in the Netherlands, um, a, a fundraising campaign for uh, Project Mine in the Netherlands. And within a few months, they uh, raised more, uh, they raised enough funding to hold genome sequence 2,000 uh, uh, patients. And so they did some cycling events, racing events, and swimming events. And um, actually one of them is in the, in the Dutch canals in, in Amsterdam. And um, that's not very clean water usually. I don't know if you've seen that, but it, it's not where you go. It doesn't look like you want to go swimming there. There are many old bikes in it, and it smells. But 2,000 people swam in it for ALS including our queen here. I don't know if you know our queen. She looks a little bit like the Belgian queen, but she's from Argentina. She's slightly prettier, I think. But I, I, maybe I'm, I'm not, it's not very good to say. But, uh, slightly, slightly. And, but um, uh, look here, you can see that's her, her mouth. She's really her swimming was on the news. It was very good for the project, and it helped a lot uh, to raise awareness for for ALS and to raise awareness for Project Mind. And so we set our goals very high, and we thought, well, why don't we make it an international uh, project? So this is our aim. We went to the UK and to uh, Belgium and to the US and many other countries to see whether you can uh, export the fundraising campaign and export also the idea of uh, sequencing, uh, whole genome sequencing, many, many samples. And um, so we started a consortium of ALS, uh, of, of ALS researchers uh, to combine the data banks internationally and to have sufficient numbers of, of DNA. And uh, we also started, as I just said, talking to other uh, charities all over the world uh, to see whether they can uh, will they also participate in it. So this is the international approach, um, a worldwide collaboration between ALS centers and foundations on a 
groundbreaking scales of very large uh, scale international and that's the only way to generate significant results. We want to combine all the ALS biobanks in the world um, uh, for this uh, project, so it's a un unique opportunity to share the knowledge in each uh, country. And um, what's also important is that by combining all the efforts in the different countries for whole genome sequencing, you can reduce the price for, for whole genome sequencing per genome uh, substantially. It's a tier pricing model, so if you want to see this 50 D, uh, DNA samples, it's, it's a 5,000 euro per sample, but if you um, uh, whole genome sequence 5,000 patients, the price goes down to 1,500 euro, so it goes down substantially. So if we share um, uh, the funding and negotiate together with uh, companies that do the whole genome sequencing, it's uh, much more efficiently. So we want to we start an international campaign for for funding, sponsor a genome. Um, it's proven and successful, as already said, in the Netherlands. Not only for this project, but the whole project also raised awareness for ALS and also raised the total amount of funding uh, for ALS. Um, the structure that we um, uh, set up is actually decentralized. So. Um, uh, in each country there's a team of an ANS researcher and a, a, a charity and all the donors donate in that specific country to the charity in that country for the DNAs in that country. For example, I used the example of Belgium because we are in Belgium. If there's a sponsor in Belgium, um, the sponsor donates to the ANS Liga and for um, the uh, uh, ANS Biobank in Leuven. So it's, it's, uh, we call that more like a, a franchise system. So it's like uh, McDonald's in each country. There's a, um, uh, a, a, a researcher and a funding agency. And um, they do their own campaigning, but we all use the same format, the same uh, clips that we have, uh, and uh, we all hold genome sequence, the DNA, the same way. So at the end, we can pull the uh, data together and analyze together and learn from each other. So we started a website, so if you're interested in the project, you go to www.projectmind.com um, and each country that participates has a, has its own site, so a page on the website and, um, and, you can all pay, and patients can start their own campaign through the website. So if you have a birthday and you want to help the project, you can start your own campaign, your own project through the website to help sponsor a genome, two genomes, half a genome, ten genomes. So these are here are all the countries that participate. This, this, this is the website. And you can see exactly for each country how many uh, genomes, uh, how much funding there already is for, for the biobank. Um, so it's also like a race a little bit. Which country is going to be first to 100%? So here are all the different uh, countries that participate now. You can see that many uh, countries. So, uh, um, so Lucy is also participating, the UK, MDA, Association, ALS Liga, Ireland, and many other uh, countries, and we're still talking to France and Germany and, and Turkey, we hope that many others will also uh, follow. So where are we now? We have a consortium, we have a data sharing agreement, we have a data set, we have questionnaires developed, there are many legal issues that, that we already solved partly, uh, we already have this huge set of data, so we have, we're talking to uh, companies that store the data and where we can store the data and, um, and compute and analyze the, the data. And we already have funding for 6,000 uh, genomes. So that's very good in such a short time, but there's still a long way to go, 16,500. So here, so we still need to set up many more projects. Here's actually it's a real racing car, the Project Mine on it. Project Mine, make it yours. And we also have a clip. Dames and heren, mesdames and messieurs. 
Ah, dat is het is het is de moord is het 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 de de patiënt achter in het lichaam dat men niet langer zelf kan besturen. La sclerose latérale amyotrophique ou ALS est une maladie terrible. Elle dégénère progressivement les tissus nerveux et musculaires, laissant le patient dans un corps qu'on ne peut plus contrôler soi-même. Pourtant, il n'existe encore aucun remède et la recherche reste très limitée. Gezien de zeldzaamheid van de ziekte, is er te weinig interesse vanwege de grote pharmaceutische bedrijven. Maar laten we niet vergeten dat er wereldwijd zo'n 350.000 mensen aan ALS lijden. Wanneer ALS je leven overvalt, valt je lichaam stil, is terecht de slogan van de lichaam. Het project MIND, refererend naar het werkwoord to mine, ontginnen, wil hier verandering in brengen. Het objectief is het verzamelen van genetische data van mensen met deze progressieve dodelijke spierziekte. Om op die manier meer te leren over de mogelijke oorzaken en remedies. Door de DNA-profielen van meer dan 22.500 mensen in kaart te brengen, gaat men op zoek naar een behandeling voor ALS. In Nederland is het onderzoek reeds van start gegaan. België, het Verenigd Koninkrijk, Duitsland, Ierland en Zwitserland gaan in het project instappen of zijn er al ingestapt. This transnational project is one of unprecedented size and it could truly lead to new insight into the causes and effects of ALS and other disorders. So I would like to call on everyone's support for this project to help eradicate ALS from the world of tomorrow. The project is called MINE. Please make it yours. So that's our president of Europe, and thanks to the ALS Sweden, got him filming. But there are more clips, you can see those on the, uh, on the website. Um, so I, I think Professor uh, Horan already uh, talked about this, I think patient-oriented research is more important than ever, so we need your support, your help in, in research more than ever because of new technologies. Genetics is one example. I think imaging is another example that's very going to be very progressive and will help to uh, to identify biomarker for disease that is very much needed to develop uh, uh, treatment. So this is the more as the concept that we work with so the patient in the middle of phenotyping, imaging will help, and then we want to study the lifestyle factors, environmental research, environmental factors in genetics. And one way, we, uh, one uh, other platform we recently set up, and we started it already in the Netherlands, and we hope to expand it also to the rest of uh, Europe. It's a project called Trikels, uh, Treatment Research Institute for the Cure of ALS. And what we want to do is to bring together, as I already told you, I'm going to go to the next slide. Pressing harder doesn't work. Uh, so. So we want to bring together the biotech companies and the ALS centers uh, and the patients together. And patients actually, the principle behind it is that patients can sign up and show that they're interested to participate in trials, but also in imaging studies, genetic studies, and that they can identify themselves that they are willing to help uh, to uh, find treatment for the disease. I want to end uh, here. So if there are any questions, please uh, ask. Thank you very much, Professor Van den Berg, for this unique patient-driven project. We really hope it will be a breakthrough. And curious about any questions, please? Question at the back. Questions are welcome. I have two questions. It's uh, Number one, on the scale from zero until we get the drug, how much is this uh, of importance and expenses? Is it when we finish this? collection, 
to be have all the, all the cost done or how how much do you think we have covered? And the other one is we have many genes that we already know about. Why don't we do something with them? Are we just collecting this for fun? Yeah, so one is, well, the first question is related, I think, to this project, to Project Mine. How much will it solve it? How much do we know when it's all done? And how will it help treatment? So that, that was the first part of the question. Um, well, I think, I, I think, um, um, so one more question over there, I think. Um, the, um, well, okay. So, it's impossible to answer your question because no one knows. That's the most honest question. I mean, if we would know all the answers before we do the project, and if we would know exactly what would come out of it, uh, we would we would have probably worked at the stock market and not in research. So it's, it's, we cannot predict what we'll find. Well, we can only uh, hope that we will um, that we go the right track, and that we um, that um, the only answer, the only way to get the answer is to do the project. And you have to, to get the real answers, you have to do it on this large scale. And so, altogether, uh, the project is an expensive project. It's, it's, uh, we don't know yet what price we'll get for the whole genome sequencing. Let's say if it's 1,500. You can calculate, two, more than 20,000 will be 13 million uh, euro, maybe. It sounds like a lot of money, but will save a lot of money by doing it together. So I'm sure that in five years we'll all spend the 30 million each in, in, in each country a little bit. And then it will be a little bit spread out over the whole world. But the money will be spent on genetics. So it sounds like a lot of money because it's all pulled together. But that's the principle of the project, to pull it all together from the beginning and not at the end. So we are able to also analyze the data altogether. So um, um, I think in a way, the way it's set up, it's money-wise, financially-wise, it's a very efficient uh, project. And if you want to, ex to ex extrapolate it to treatment, um, I think, um, if we talk now, and you may disagree with me, but I think if we talk now um, uh, about probably, what we, I think the, the, the first cure, the highest chance, let me be careful what I say, the highest chance of getting an effective treatment is very much, is most likely I think in, gen, in the genetic, in the patients that we know the gene of. I think the soonest we'll find probably a treatment for specific mutations in NGD. I think the most hopeful uh, ways to treat patients right now are the gene-based yeah. therapies. I, mean, yeah. I, I think it's really exciting. I mean, we have um, two genes um, that are important in familial NS, c 72 and SOD1. There are treatments being developed as we speak. There are clinical trials starting for both of those. The, the second uh, point, and it's a larger point about the, the point of doing Project Mine, is that it goes back to my slide about the differences in the disease. And, and most likely, what we'll find is, what we'll be doing is we'll be marrying uh, the, the very detailed clinical examinations that we do of people with ALS with their genetics. And, and that, in turn, will allow us to find the, the small variations in the genetics that will that will allow us to target. And this is how cures for cancer are found. Breast cancer, 80% of breast cancer is curable now. And that's mostly because of small variations in, in both genetics and also pathways. And we're we're at a point now where we can probably do this with ALS using the genetic data that we're going to generate coupled 
with the very detailed clinical evaluations of adrenal patients. It's big data. It's, a, it's massive data. It's broken Leonard's uh, institution's computer a couple of times. Yeah. It's, it's big, big data. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I would like to invite the third speaker.